this is a fairly short piece, and don't be fooled, the book isn't out yet, I just had a, a copy printed for myself so I could feel it and touch it. <clears throat> a mile down the road, a squad car blipped its siren and rolled up to him. Afternoon, said the officer. Sidney nodded at him, but kept walking. Hey. Step on those brakes. I need a word with you. Sidney did. He turned and waited while the officer shut off the engine and came around the vehicle to join him on the sidewalk. I got a call from the Shane brothers about an hour ago. Said they'd been ripped off. They described you down to those twig ankles of yours. Said I might find a suit on you which you acquired by crooked means. Shane brothers? Purveyors of fine clothing, said the officer. That's the slogan, at least. I didn't steal nothing, said Sidney. Yeah, they're north of positive you did. Do I look like I got a suit on me? You got a case to put it in. This here's a briefcase, said Sidney. He held it aloft, shook it, so the officer could hear the pages tossing around. It's nothing but photographs in here and sketches and whatnot. What's your name, son? It's Sydney. Sydney what? Sydney Carlton. Well, Sydney, I'm Officer Ruby, and I know these men over at the Shane Brothers, and I know they wouldn't lie to me. I didn't steal nothing, said Sydney. And you can look at me that way all you want, but it won't change my answer. You mean it won't change the facts, said Ruby. That's what I said. The man gave a laugh. That, Sidney Carlton, ain't what you said by a damn sign. You plan to hold that against me? Maybe. You here with anybody? I was here with Alma, but I think she took off on me. Alma? She's my foster mama. You all from around here? In a kind of a way. Got a ranch in ten mile, about 10 minutes up 81, but we come in the town a lot. A voice came through a web of static on the car's radio. You could hardly make out the words. Officer Ruby listened briefly without interest and turned back to Sydney. Are you hungry? Am I what? Hungry. I believe it's about lunchtime. I guess. I don't know. Well, let's say we get this mess sorted out over a burger. Respects and all, Mr. Officer. I don't know there's any mess left to sort out. Then allow me to do the knowing for you. What you can decide is whether we'll do it at the station down the street or at a dining room with hot food and tomato ketchup. The cafe was near empty. Sydney welcomed us. They were attracting a lot of attention. They got a table in the back, and he ordered a bacon cheeseburger with fries, though he only had a couple do dollars in his pocket. Ruby watched him eat for a minute, largely ignoring his own food. Sydney tried to keep his eyes down on the plate, but he felt the man's attention burning into the top of his skull. At length, he glanced up and met the man's eye. What? You're in a pickle right now, the man said quietly. Sidney shook his head. No, sir, I don't think that's right. Sure it is. Everyone's in a pickle of some kind, myself included. And you are in a pickle. And it ain't a big one now, but it will grow you let it. And then it won't be a pickle no more, but something plenty different. Something you can't just get out of. Sidney shoved the drawer of his jaw slightly and brought it back. He could feel the click of his front teeth. You mean about the suit, he said in a low voice. I don't mean the suit, Sidney. Because I told you I didn't steal no suit. No, said the officer. But the way the vowel sat on his tongue betrayed his insincerity. There was a long silence. Sidney could feel, staring across the table, 
a low flame of resentment rising inside of him. Ruby wiped his hands on a napkin and then shook his head slowly and thought. Some people find, son, that they don't fit in the world the way they've had themselves fit. And so these people, they have a choice. They can change themselves so as to fit to the world, or they can change the world. They can make the world fit to them. He leaned forward in his seat. But the world is a stubborn son of a bitch. You got that? Stubborn. And people, hell, we change all the time. We change whether we like it or not. Sidney pushed his chair back and got up. He grabbed his briefcase. I don't know what the hell you're talking about. You sure do. I don't think I'm hungry for this burger. You done already ate most of it. Well, I'm not hungry for no more. Am I okay to go? You can go. Will you think about what I just told you? Sidney gave no response. He only stood there looking down at the officer, hating him, though he didn't know why the man had shown him mercy. But maybe that was all the why he needed. He grabbed his wallet from his pocket and took out the couple of $1 notes in there and put them on the table. That's all I got, he said. I didn't ask for no food, but that's all I got, all right? Yeah, said Ruby. That's all right. Sidney watched him a moment longer, then he nodded and faced around and walked out of the diner. Thank you. Jenny, I'm um, So, uh, again, there are lots of readers, uh, but since I have this wacky hat, I feel obliged to mention that uh, there's going to be a hat party uh, on April 1st.